and just uh, everything's doing all sorts of crazy shit. Now Zoom is telling you when you're recording and when you're not recording. Facebook, Facebook flagged my posts in my own group about my own sales on my own shit but for the first time because because the word clients was in there and that somehow flagged so i had to defend it but then i figured okay i want to post this thing so i took it down and i posted i changed the word client to um folks and i posted it and it said you know at the bottom of it it said paul and it said uh your content is being flagged because of because uh of potential attempt to sell animals and the example of the word clients before you know flag for content clients and then it said flag for potentially selling animals and then it said paul and i should now that i know that i should have taken a I should have taken a screenshot of that because that's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> but I was looking at it saying, you know, um, it's because you keep mentioning getting out of the herd. Yeah, getting out of the herd. You're so truly they, they figured you're winning that <laughs> Paul the cow. <laughs> the herder. The herder. <laughs> <clears throat> I tell you, it's um it was it's interesting. It's interesting. Facebook is. Uh, Let me give me some light here. I reacting think I'm, I'm, to things. I mean, I say. Oh, you're good though. How's this now? Uh, I think that's nice. I had the, my curtains closed. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Too much? Enough? Well, it, it, it looks very good, but now you have, now what you have is glare on your glasses. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Now take my glasses off. How about yeah, exactly. And I, I often, you know, I mean, I wear glasses too, but I don't put them, I don't use them in presentation because they can get in the way and I am used to feeling my way through. Um, so... <clears throat> I know that Lisa will get on when she can. I know that Jody is uh, show, attempting to show up when she can. I know that a lot of other people said that they'd show up, but uh, we'll see. And it's not important. If this, is the, if this is the three of us, when Lisa's on, it'll be great. And that's totally fine with me. This is about tweaking and adjusting and improving your message so that it becomes more efficiently clear and accurate after we've moved into saying what you actually want to say. And I'm explaining this, although I know you, Gilles, know this very well. I have noticed some things and I have plenty that I can talk about. I suppose I should mention this. The information that we have coming in from our screens, from the news, from you know messages from friends, from messages from people we don't know, all of this stuff provides us with an opportunity to react to what we see going right and what we see not going right. And we include that information in our list of con you know, content that we're interested in discussing. That's how we build a long list of material to choose from. When you have a long list of stuff, as long as you make it specific enough so that you can remember what it is you want to react to, what it is you want to push against, what it is you want to talk about, then you can see it a month later on that list and say, oh, yeah, I remember that. I know what that is. If you write it down in too convenient
if you write it down into convenient a shortcut, you will have a hard time actually finding your way in when you try to remember what it is. And the point of the the point of creating a list of the information, a list of the topics you want to discuss is that when you write them down, when you pay attention to what it is you're trying to understand and remember, what topics you actually are interested in getting to the core of, being specific enough when you make your list gives you the ability to remember exactly where it should be, exactly what it was when it was when you, when you wanted to react to it. Please. Fantastic. <clears throat> Virginia. Yes, sir. Where where in Virginia did you say? Northern Virginia, I'm about 30 minutes from Washington, D.C. Uh, I have, uh, I performed north up in, Richmond. Nor north of Richmond, north of Richmond, right, right. I've performed in Richmond, I performed in Arlington, I performed in some of those other suburbs, and Columbia, Maryland, and some of those, all those different places, you know. Um, Nice rolling hills. Are you in rolling hill country? No. Are you in like now flat I have world? A new goal. What is your new goal? Get a new home in rolling hills. <laughs> <laughs> to roll some hills. <laughs> Make some bills. <laughs> Makes uh, that's right. Skills to pay the bills so you can live in the rolling hills. <laughs> that's uh you know they don't they don't call me they don't call me mr snazzy words for nothing they don't call me mr snazzy words for anything <laughs> well my man how are you nope there he is he disappeared so we were talking, uh, Lisa, we were, we were talking about the aspects of what it means to start to build a list of the information that you want to talk about. Okay, this is very important. And Gilles knows this, and I'm not going to repeat it for very long, but I am going to describe this because it's really valuable. When you have things that are coming in on a daily basis or a weekly basis or from wherever the fuck it shows up, you have different things that you will be reacting to, some of which are just daily bullshit, and some of which are actually at the core of something you really need to talk about. And when you need to talk about it, you want to create, compile a list of all of the different topics, the subjects, the information that you resonate with, that you care about, that you believe in, that you hate, that you think people are doing foolishly, and you create this list in such a way that you don't make it too much of a shortcut to the idea that when you revisit it a, a week, a month, two months, four months later, you actually don't know what the fuck you wrote down. You need to actually pay attention to the particulars, the details that will enable you to remember it later so that you can picture yourself when you first thought of it and you can say, oh yeah, right, I can talk about that. So I give myself some shortcuts. I give myself some little nickname code words, but I also make sure I write everything down really with enough information that I can revisit it and get there. And that comes to the point where we are now. We have this opportunity to actually get out of our own fucking way and say what we goddamn mean the way we want to, because you folks may already know, but I don't pull my punches. And I actually try as best as I can to be my authentic self always on this stuff. The reason is nobody cares about you doing it like everybody else. 
that's the surefire way to become part of the generic crop, the herd, the flock. And we don't want to do that. The only way, the only way that any of your favorite artists, of your favorite movie stars, of your favorite musicians, of your favorite poets, writers, purveyors of truth, actually, <coughs> excuse me, rose above the herd is by saying it with their own unique mechanism, their own way, their own personal flair. You have to fearlessly be willing to piss people off in order to actually resonate with the people who you want to be hanging around with. So this, the next 45 minutes <coughs> is about not making it nice. And that's just, and that's not just me. I know how to not make it nice. This is your opportunity. We have things in our lives, and I'm going to just give you a short warning here that I'm going to be calling upon you to bring it, whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you have a chance to, you know, you have a chance to put your, you know, your, your big boy pants on and your big girl pants on and... <laughs> If you get all scared, don't worry. I, I can't see the mess you left on the floor because we're on video. <laughs> That's it. Huh? <laughs> Everything you say can and will be used. Can and will be used as a mop to clean up whatever the fuck is underneath your chair. <laughs> <laughs> so... Some of you know how this works already. <laughs> Some folks are going to come later on. Some folks are going to accidentally miss it. Some folks have whatever emergencies at home, and they are uh, hopefully doing good things. But here we are. Um, do we have any? Uh, if 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 Gilles, you choose to begin, then that gives lease and will an opportunity to sort of uh you know get their get their shizzle in gizzle <laughs> you have something for us you on anything or like uh okay let me give you the simple prompt how's this have you discovered anything within the past few days where you took a look and you said, this seriously has got to change? Shall I go first? I'll bring something first, just so we can set the right tone. I have something. You have something. I, you Go ahead. I, have something, I experienced something that yesterday that changed my perspective. It's, um, I... I'm going to, um, you know what I'm talking about because we've had a conversation before, but I've developed, I've invented, I created this disc, okay, that I use as a tool. And I had difficulty choosing or determining where shall I begin from this disc. And as you know, when you look at a disc, it's two dimension, right? Yes. So a flat surface is two dimension. Now I was able to bring this into three dimension in a way that just like resolved a problem that I've had for a long time. So now I'm so thrilled about like this new perspective and I started building this and that will determine how I talk, what I say first, because my problem was, where do I start? Where's the present? And I've, I've established that. So from this, I'll be able to build up, but just in chunks, because 
I've been trying to chunk this thing in pieces, chewable pieces. And uh, so I feel thrilled about that. Uh, if that means anything to someone like Lisa who hasn't heard the past, but uh, I feel thrilled about what I've accomplished. Well, that's terrific. So you have what you are, um, so what you are reacting to or pushing against or finding something with is a certain breakthrough of clarity on a mechanism for you to be able to deliver what you want to deliver. Yeah. Fantastic. That's very good. So if you were going to, uh, no, I'm going to push you a little bit, Gilles. Okay. You know, I do get... judo. I do judo. You do judo. That's right. I know judo, jujitsu, and four other. Uh, you push, I'm going to, Japanese I'm going to pull. Words. <laughs> you push, I pull. <laughs> right. So uh, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get this out of the uh, I'm just gonna get this out of the realm of nice, and and I'm gonna ask you to revisit what you just said and say it in as short an amount of time as you can, but don't don't make it completely clear to us. Make it very very evidently passionate to you. Struggle. Epiphany solution. For the longest time, I've been trying to figure out where to start. Where is my starting point? Because I have lots to say, but where should I begin? And yesterday I came I, to a, a place, a, a breakthrough. What I discovered is well, what I made. I put something that was in two dimension and brought into the three dimension. And so it becomes more materialized, more like visible, more something I can show all around. And this all around excites me because it covers everything that I want to talk about. Great. That's good. That's very clear. That's very clear. Not only that, but we understand. And I would say, I'm going to say this to you now, because where you're going with that becomes more clear. And if you give an analogy, you say, I could show you a flat something or other, a painting or a piece of paper. But if I actually hand you some three-dimensional object that you can hold there's weight to it there's shape to it there's shadow and it's that type of clarity of three dimensions that i now have when i offer you what i say yeah you, you know what i mean i know exactly what you mean because i built it i know <laughs> exactly i i'm so thrilled that's very cool that's very <laughs> cool so uh <clears throat> Lee, do you have something uh, that you that has gotten stuck in your craw lately? Something that you witnessed, maybe even within the past few hours, or woke up in the middle of the night and said, "Oh my fucking god, that thing again." Great question. I suppose that it has to do with postponed decision making. Sometimes I feel incredibly decisive, like make a decision, don't go back on it, get it done, no problem. But then there's this other part of me that likes to overanalyze things and then Human nature likes to play with things a little bit. And so then you get into this like analysis paralysis and then you get distracted and then you move on to something else and something happens to where you didn't make a decision on that thing that you were over analyzing and it gets put to the side. So this morning I was confronted with an opportunity to be decisive and I decided that now is not the time to decide. I need to think about this a little bit more. I need to come up with a game plan and just because that opportunity was presented in that moment doesn't mean 
I need to respond right now. I need to think about it in my own good timing. And I need to come up with a realistic game plan that's executable and sustainable for my life. And then I'll decide when the time is right for me. And that was the answer to your question. Okay, so this is an interesting thing. We're going to get into this and you're going to do the you're going to you're going to present this thing again. The reason being that practice is what practice when we actually examine correctly, we go into something and we start to understand what's at the crux of something. So, I just want to uh focus in on what were the issues at play in what you were talking about just now? That's a great question. See, that would be actually having to reveal some truth about myself. And that I might not want to do. <laughs> ah, but that's not, but that's, that's not that's where not we are. No, no, no. <laughs> not only that, but not only that, but you also said everything so nicely. And I actually <laughs> want you to say it kind of not nice. <laughs> <laughs> the whole idea, <laughs> the whole idea is that we have an opportunity to actually say it the way we wish we could say it, the way we are actually thinking of it instead of delivering nicely. But mm, I see, I see. Yeah. So, uh, Gilles, did you hear anything in what Lisa was saying that, uh, you know, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you about uh, 30 to 60 seconds to uh, kick in with a little bit of info. So well, feedbacks and thoughts. I, I think uh, what, what got me is like, uh, I just brought, was brought into her conversation, like uh, we, 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 and like, uh, it seemed as if she spread the ownership of uh, her not being decisive. <laughs> so I, Lisa, I keep it. <laughs> keep your that, own it. It's yours. <laughs> you're not letting it in. Is that what you're saying? No, no, it's yours. You can keep it. Have it. It's yours. <laughs> so it was nice and polite, but like, no, it's yours. Like <laughs> your decision. Thanks, but no thanks. You know, <laughs> that's a and well, just practice. You know, it's just sing it all. Sing it at all. That's all. Oops. Sorry. Yeah. Well, that's that's my comment. Okay. But I like the end. At the end, you were getting to it. You were getting to it. And the fact, like in terms of content, the fact that it's on your time, that's good. You know, you dominate the time. You don't let the time dominate you. That's perfect. I like that. So um, I want to I want to include Will. Will, are you here? We got a picture now. <laughs> yeah, we have a, yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> it was black. Yes. It? That's it. He says yes. He says yes. Um, okay. Yeah, if you, un if you unmute, you can offer anything that you uh, want to kick in with. Uh, as uh, thoughts or feedback that, uh, you know, based on what Lisa just said. Do you have anything you want to kick in with? Unless he's a fast typer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Okay, you're talking Portuguese, not so good in your English. That's all right. I'm not going to push you or pressure you. But if you're here to see how this stuff works, then just pay attention and follow along. And that's totally fine with me, my man. Totally fine. So I'm going to offer you, Lisa, that I saw that there was a, there were two different parts of the issue of making a decision. One is the fact that you can get in your own way and not make a decision. And the other is that you can actually choose to not make a decision. And those are both opposite sides of the same choice, but 
I thought that you were going to be talking about the fact that you get in your own way and not make a decision and how can we cure ourselves of that? But actually what you did was you said there are other times when not making a decision is incredibly valuable and I embrace that today. <clears throat> so I just want you to know that when that stuff comes forward in this particular thing that you were saying, that is the crux of what you're talking about. So if you need to, we are going to address whether or not putting one of them first is the better one and how to actually say it quick and ugly, down and dirty. Okay, I'm in. Good. This is practice and this is riffing and this is live. The whole idea is to start to take an idea and turn it into something quicker and more compelling by not being nice with it. You can always go back to the nice later, but now we say it like we mean it. So get ugly with it and have fun. How do I do this? Let's do it. Yep. The phone is ringing. Do I recognize the number? Mm. I actually do. I think I'll answer it. Okay, that's not what I wanted to hear. And that's not how I wanted to hear it. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. I'll get back to you. So I have a phone call this morning, right? And I really didn't wanna take the call. I actually put something aside took the call. So I allowed myself to be distracted from something that was actually more productive for me in that moment. And now I've been presented with some information that was not presented well. It's not something I wanted to hear about. And now I have a choice. Do I react or respond? The nice thing to do is just to respond politely, because for crying out loud, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. Have you heard that before? Maybe not, but maybe you heard it a lot. So now I have this information that I don't even wanna deal with right now that has to be decided upon ASAP. What does that even mean? So, I choose not to think about it right now. I will continue to overanalyze it, come up with my own game plan, and respond in my own time when it's the right time. But then there's consequences to not making that decision. So have I fully weighed out carefully about those consequences of not being decisive, ASAP. No, but that's okay. I have a tendency to overanalyze and postpone decisions anyway. I'm either very decisive or I don't decide right away. And that is the choice as well. And so that's something I don't really want to talk about right now, but it's life. I'm all That's very good. I, I um, <laughs> okay. I'm, how, how did that feel? How could you sit through that? 
Was that hard for you? Was that painful? <laughs> no, no, no. It's fun to see where it's going because oh. you took a different tactic, and that's very good. So I want to ask. I want to ask you about something. Um. Uh, why answer something that's an imposition on your day? I didn't want to. I didn't like being imposed upon. What did it make you feel? Annoyed. <laughs> Slightly annoyed. Okay, more than annoyed. Frustrated. What would you, what would you, <laughs> what would you actually, yeah, okay, good. Um, what would you actually, like, <sighs> Let's let's have just a moment here and pretend okay. that you're in your car by yourself and you're answering this thing by mistake while you're enjoying just some, I don't know, some of your favorite music. What would be the inner monologue going on inside your head? I probably put on Run DMZ song and say you talk too much. <laughs> you talk too much. <laughs> and <laughs> if you had an opportunity to say to that person, how would you interrupt that person and say what you actually meant to get them to stop? I don't know, honestly. How do you stop someone from talking? Do you just let them keep going and going and going and going, especially when they're interrupting your favorite Run DMC song or whatever it is? <laughs> Excuse me, can I interrupt for a moment? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's what you do, you stop them. <laughs> oh, that was an example. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Excuse me, this is my favorite song. Ah, ah. Okay, good. Right? Nice. Okay, remember that. Can you can you give me that just another one one more time just now? Go. Stop! It's my favorite song. No, no, no. Yes, good, good. So that we're going to we're going to get back into this and we're going to go very quickly into the idea of this conversation and what i really wanted to say was shh, shh, shh. <laughs> but i'm but i i grew up being nicer than that so yeah okay because it seems to me like actually you try to offer your most gentle side. Is that correct? Yes. My mom taught me to be nice. <laughs> ah, fantastic. I want you to remember that because that's a very good expression. So I want you to go right to the heart of you were interrupted with a phone call and you wanted to say blah, 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 but... My mom taught me to be nice, so I blah, 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 okay? The whole story within 60 seconds. Ready? Go. Ready. So this morning, I'm completely focused on what I needed to do. The phone rings, and I have to take the call because I recognize the number. Usually, I don't answer it if I don't recognize the number. I take the call. I hear something I didn't really invite into my day. I didn't like the way it was presented to me. And instead of saying what I really wanted to say, which was, I said, thank you for bringing this to my attention. I'll get back to you. Because my mom taught me to be nice. We should be kind. <laughs> that that's starting to go someplace 
<laughs> that is actually cutting to the core of something a lot more authentic. Very honest. And it's actually got a little more bite to it because you used your expressions and you explained what you really grew up with. Thank you. <laughs> how, did it, how did it feel? Looked fun, actually. Actually, it was fun. <laughs> it was a, little, <laughs> a little liberating. <laughs> Yeah, good. Right. It is. It is liberating. The truth is liberating. And in fact, getting to the core of saying it the way you actually want to say it takes a little bit of investigation to get there. But that was fun. <laughs> I made you work really hard. Sorry. Uh, this, is, uh, this, this, this is a Rubik's Cube. You know, I like the logic puzzle Rubik's of cubes. figuring... <laughs> I, I love that stuff. You know, it's a logic thing. And it's also a matter of what what pieces do we need to turn to make everything click into place. So, you know, we start with we start with something and then we say, OK, where where and how can this turn into something denser, quicker, tighter with more passion, yes. more honesty, more oomph. Yes. Gilles, what did you think of that? I found that impressive. You got me. She, you had both that uh, being polite, but I felt like the bite behind it, you know, like uh, I'm being polite, but I'm just holding myself here because I'm really pissed off, but I won't let you know, <laughs> you know, kind of deal. So that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, Lise, I'm, I'm curious. Um, that's a, you know, that's, that's a little bit, that, that could be something that you could talk about on video or within a discussion because in fact we've all been there we know that everyone has what they really want to say versus what they choose to say and everybody has their own specific reasons why they make the choices they make so you're offering your authentic truth quickly to the core of a simple issue, no matter how seemingly small, it actually is something we all identify with. And it can be used on all sorts of levels within any type of teaching mechanism that you want to offer. That little story that you just said there. I refer to it as repurposing a story because depending upon which angle you come at the story, you can see different ways and different, <laughs> and different points of view. And it can be used to express and explain and offer some solution from many different angles. The angle of being annoyed, the angle of your childhood rearing and what you believe in, what you would rather say, why did you even take this? Why did you let it go on and on and on? Shut off the phone. Yeah. Or coming at it from the original perspective of do you feel that this was a time when you could seize the day and make your own choice of, no, just because you say it has to happen now, I will make it. You just decision. nailed it. That was it. That was, that was how I was feeling right there at that moment. 
you wanted to seize the control over the choice, the decision making? Yes. <laughs> it's temp even if it's temporary. <laughs> Sometimes it's those little wins. We need to reclaim our time. In French, I have a friend who's, who says, chaque chose en son temps, everything in its right time, chaque chose en mon temps, everything in my time, but my time is also in elevation. So instead of being like pushed down, you know, like the time you elevated thing in your time. Chaque chose en son temps, chaque chose en mon temps. There you go. There's uh, there's some very good ones. I, I know uh, I know a French expression. Uh, uh, il n'y a pas de problème, il n'y a que solution. Et voilà. Right, right. Exactly. which means there are no problems, there are only solutions. And um, you know there and and in fact these are all within the similar philosophical viewpoint toward this particular issue and toward these types of issues because we have things coming into our lives all the time and people try to make us feel like we need to be in react mode. And um, some people don't know how to say, you think I should be in react mode, don't you? <clears throat> Let me get back to you on whether or not I accept your terms. <laughs> you know, and you know that is that is a tremendously empowering thing to start to sort through so that you can make sense of it yourself you know i have a lot of people who are giving me lots of you know video homework to on you know daily and I have to get back to them, and I promise I will get back to them. And it's very easy for me to get caught up in all of that stuff, but I can also take a look and say, ah, I have some other shit that I'm going to do first. And if you don't come to a point where you know what you need to do when you choose to do it, then you will be at the beck and call of, you know, of, of all of these other external influences. Yeah. So why do I even go off on this long enough? Uh, Gilles, you want to say something? Yeah, I just like, I feel this whole thing that's happening that Lisa's presenting, I feel excited about it all because in reality, my tool, my three-dimensional tool can address exactly that, exactly that. So I like, wow, I'm just like excited here on my seat. <clears throat> this, my seat is hot here. Fantastic, you have, some, uh, you have some strange things underneath your chair that you'll be needing to mop up and not show us later. That's good, I'm glad for yeah, you. Yeah, just like eye level, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm talking, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just riff on this just a little more because it's really valuable in terms of what we just saw with Lisa's story. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you start to get into the actual details of a story, you start to find out what that story actually is made of and what are the essential elements, right? And as you get to the essential elements, you start to see some things that other people, what Lisa was experiencing might not be the same exact thing that I'm experiencing because I have a, you know, I grew up differently than you did, Lisa. But you're cutting to the core of something very, very personal to you and individual to your own upbringing and your own reactions. And I can see it and identify with it and although it's my version is different than your version, I suddenly understand, oh yeah, I get that. I would do it my way, which is a little different than what Lisa said, 
But when I start to do that, then I get inside your story because I am identifying with my own version of what I've just heard. Now, why is that so important? It's because of this. When you go to the details of your story, you create a small microcosm of the larger world. And in so doing, those details actually allow the other people who are watching and paying attention to get involved. And when they get involved, it becomes a universality. Your details translate to creating a universal story by getting specific. And I'm going to say this in one even more broad way. The more specific you go, your microcosm actually resonates as a macrocosm. Yeah, that's, that's very powerful. Huh? If you generalize, you will only ever have like topical stuff. And when you actually go to the microcosm, you actually create a macrocosmic understanding of an issue. That is amazing, powerful transformation of my little story that was somewhat meaningless. And it reminds me of how that microcosm, the conversation within your own head, the inner dialogue, whether you're positive voices at the podium, whether you're tell you have to tell your inner critic to take a back seat, buckle up, or get the heck out for the day, the positive voices at the podium. So that's the inner conversation. And then there's the one on one conversation. And then there's the family group conversation or the work and business conversation, the team conversation, the department conversation, the company, the government, the world. And we don't ever get that inner conversation in our heads right, or even the one-on-one -on -one dynamic right, or the group conversations right. So why do we think the world's in chaos? We gotta get our conversations on point. Create order within yourself, create orders within your house, your home, your businesses, and the world. And now I've just declared world peace. We've been at war long enough. Peace uh, and <laughs> well, it, she she actually just went into the microcosm and she she used the same exact principle and she picked it apart and put it back together with the same exact method on the global scale. So you're absolutely right. I mean, I agree with you and you just tweaked and tweezed that concept as a larger philosophical idea. Well done. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is at the core of message delivery. It really is. You know, um, each of these hot seats, Gilles has been to many of them, they are all different from each other. And in this particular case, because we have a small little group, we can actually get to the core of something else. But just by virtue of what you brought up as a topic and how much time we could devote to this particular thing, we came to this particular aspect of delivery. Details are the microcosm to macrocosm transformation. It's called divine geometry. Oh, I got Elaborate. kicked out of geometry my third day of class. <laughs> and I cried all the way through calculus. Oh. <laughs> I was naturally good at that shit. I, uh, I tutored. I, I tutored calculus while I was taking calculus. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's just one of those things. But uh, Gilles, 
Want Gilles, I want you to elaborate on what you just called, uh, what you just said, divine geometry. Divine? Uh, go ahead. Divine geometry? Divine geometry, yes. Well, there is geometry as far as I know and uh, as far as I see, there is perfectness. Divine is something that is perfect. And that perfect design began as a small thing. What you centered to, that small thing, and then that expanding small thing that gets to a universe. But being having that ability to fall back, go into yourself, and you reach, you connect with that divine, that perfectness. And because you're able to describe that, that resonates with the universe because you went to the truth of what it is and how it is and, and how it's structured. And that's perfect as far as I'm concerned. I resonated with that. There is something, you know, you folks will have, you folks have heard me talk about this before. If you actually go toward your truth in your message making, you will fundamentally circumvent the standard bullshit business strategy stuff. And you will find the people who resonate with you and that will actually reveal whatever niche and whatever avatar you are looking for. Rather than all of that convenient strategy crap where it says you have to have this particular thing dialed in first and you have to have that particular thing dialed in first and you know my evidence or my challenge to all of that business strategy is to say i'm pretty sure the beatles were not thinking of a niche and an avatar when they wrote their stuff. I don't think that that happened when William Shakespeare wrote Macbeth. I'm pretty sure that there isn't a single profound invention that we use that started with a niche and an avatar. It all came from God's honest, pure truth and necessity. And it can be tweaked and tweezed and altered and refined. But there's something there within that divine sense of resonance if you go toward the truth. We, Paul, that's it. The gospel of who we are. Yeah. Winning. <laughs> Isn't this neat? Lisa, oh. how do you feel? I feel this was really amazing. It's such a productive conversation. I mean, it was constructive, not just productive. It was, um, you know, certainly the building blocks. I feel like we just built a huge, amazing bridge and transformed it. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I have the God bumps. Nice. The, um, you know, this is why I do these. <laughs> I never know what it's going to be, but I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not imposing that expectation on it. It's all about these different components of truth. And well, um, there, you got me out of my comfort zone, that's for sure. Hmm. Thank it looks you. better for it. <laughs> Thank you. That's uh <laughs> I wouldn't even talk at my last meeting. I just was like, I don't I'm here and I'm thankful to be here, but I don't want to talk. <laughs> so, Aww. so thank I'm, you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. You have plenty to say. You have plenty of valuable things to say. Um you you both know you both know where to find me on a regular basis Gilles we're in regular contact and we will be continuing to have all sorts of uh things as you 
book your next calls and we figure out our next uh, our next steps on your path. And Lisa, it's a pleasure to finally have you uh, in here at the right time. Thank I'm you. delighted. Thank you so much. Yeah, and we also will be in touch. Um, these uh, these are an opportunity to sort of understand who makes sense and uh, you seem to make sense, so. Thank you, you do too. And thanks for doing it differently because you're right. Your message really resonates with me because everything is so blah, 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 boring. And you also have a gift of not snacking when you talk, so thank you. Oh, you mean like that? Yes, that drives me crazy. <laughs> Why do people that's, do that? That's very funny. I mean, I'm, I'm even guilty of it sometimes. I drive myself crazy with it. But uh, yeah, thank you for not doing that. Well, it makes it much pleasure. easier to listen. <laughs> well, I have to think, did I do that? <laughs> Maybe. I didn't notice if you did it. I didn't notice. So good. <laughs> no, no, I didn't either. <laughs> Usually I pick it up right away. <laughs> Right. So you, you passed, uh, you, you passed Lisa's special, uh, secret, uh, you know, whip ass. Because I hear that I don't problem. listen or follow anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then we begin with the shunning. <laughs> shun, 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 shun. Yes. Shun. <laughs> exactly. That's, uh, that's yours. That's, <laughs> Take a picture, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Let's actually we're we're gonna we're gonna do that. We'll we'll take our our favorite our favorite shunning pose. Ready? Um, I'm gonna get this on here and uh, how do we do this? <laughs> Capture uh, and time screen. Uh, Start timer. Right okay. now. Okay. Ten seconds. <laughs> Ten seconds. I don't know Yay. how long it goes, but <laughs> the best one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come on. You, you, you folks have to kick in with a better one than that, because you know, like okay. sh shunning. <laughs> I mean, shun. Did that do it? Where the hell is it? Uh, action shot, right? Eh? Yeah, action <laughs> shot. Okay, one more, one more. Ready? <laughs> okay, it's uh, it, it says it it says it's a ten second thing. So now kick in with a big shot. Yeah. <laughs> Good, good. Okay. That's sufficient. That's sufficient okay. shunning. Trying to be silly. Thank you. <laughs> well, well done. Are you well done. A picture making a movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That's the uh, that's the issue, isn't it? Um, <laughs> now we're going back to the Zoom here, and where's my Zoom? There we are. Okay, uh, we had we had we had plenty of time with a couple action shuns. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, shun intended. Oh no, pun intended. <laughs> nice. I like that. I like that. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. You you look shunny to me. <laughs> okay. <Shining> well, right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Shine or shun. <laughs> rise and rise and shun. <laughs> um. Are we all shun? Yes, yes, yes. You shun for today. <laughs> My, uh, yes, right. Exactly. Yeah, it took a moment. <clears throat> we'll see you. We'll see you soon. You know where to find me and um, enjoy yourselves. You folks still have a few more hours of your day. Mine's getting now. Now it's now it's 8 p.m. So I'm going to hit some dinner. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you, Lisa.
Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It was great. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Gilles. Thanks, Lee. Thank you.